Tend to the tale of Sweeney Todd. Tend to the tale of Sweeney Todd. He served a doctor to vengeful God. He served a doctor to vengeful God. What happened then? Well, that's the play. And he wouldn't want us to give it away. It's a great, great show, and I guess one of my three favorite roles I've ever played in my life. Um, it's pretty hard to figure out which is my most favorite, but this is, is right up there. It, it offers me a challenge musically and dramatically and comedically, and, uh, and I get a lot of strokes when I do it right, and it's, it's really fun. <laughs> Sweeney is a very complex role, an incredibly demanding role, and uh, I was a little intimidated at first, but it's amazing how much I've come to love Sweeney and love the journey that I take every night with it, and uh, it's, it's a real gift. It has so many universal themes of, of pain and vengeance and love and passion, and, and I think that even though we're not serial killers, we can relate to this man's sorrow and, and need for revenge. Pretty women at the mirrors in their gardens at the writing Weather watching how they may come and sing proof of heaven as you're living. Pretty women, sir, pretty women, here's to pretty women, all the pretty women. I approach him just like you or I. I mean, to me, if, if some law enforcement officer coveted my wife, wrongfully had me sent to prison, um, my wife apparently commits suicide, and he takes my daughter. That would mess me up a little bit. And um, he escapes from prison after 15 years. He comes back, he doesn't know what he's going to find. And so to me, when the show starts, he's very uncertain. He's, he's sure he's bitter, but I think more than that is his desperate desire to find his wife and his child and escape with them off to somewhere. Toby is the crazy kid. <laughs> I'm probably not supposed to refer to him as that, but he is. Um, he's a very sweet kid. And uh, yeah, I think of him as like a young teenager. He acts a little bit younger though because of the trauma that he experiences. So some of his characteristics are a little bit even, even younger. And uh, yeah, he's very sweet. Um, he does have a slightly darker side because of the bad things he experienced too. She's a troubled girl. I mean, she's got the blood of Sweeney in her, so she's got the ability to kill, and she does. Um, she is locked up by the judge, so that sort of um, isolation has probably put her in her own world, and who knows if the judge has molested her or, you know, done other sorts of bad things to her. And so I think, um, I think there are a lot of layers that I keep to myself and keep as a secret to uh, <laughs> create the character, but um, yeah, she is, she is troubled. She's not a villain. She doesn't think she's a villain. Of course, what villain thinks they're a villain? She, um, she's a pragmatic woman. She's a businesswoman. She's lived a very hard life. She's willing to work very hard. And um, Mr. Todd, comes into her life and she's had a thing for him for many, many years. Um, she was probably a much younger woman when he was a young man with his wife and child and she was probably married to a much older man who died two years before Sweeney was sent to Australia, if you do the math as she describes it. Um, and she's she's been in love with him and he amazingly walks into her shop and she sees the love of her life and dollar signs and uh, success and an opportunity to have a life. It's only then after he meets Mrs. Lovett and she leads him to believe that his wife has committed suicide but then tells him his daughter his daughter's been taken by Judge Turpin and, and then he slowly starts to lose control. Um, but I mean it's just like people who get cut off on the freeway today, you know, road rage. I mean, it doesn't take much for people to snap. And in our society now, people are sent to prison wrongfully and uh, for life and, and are worse. He means to marry me one day. What shall I do? I'd rather I die. I have a plan. Swallow poison on Sunday. That's what I'll do. I'll get some knives. I have a plan. Do is that a noise? I think I heard a noise. It could be. Is it poverty? Is it quarter day? So that was a noise. Wasn't that a noise? You must have heard that. <laughs> 
It's really fun to be a part of the storytelling in a way that's communicating through our instruments. You know, we're we're an ensemble and we support each other the whole time and it's this organism that just keeps on going even when something goes wrong. And that's actually one of the most fun parts about the show is when something goes wrong and how we all kind of work together to correct it on the spot. It was so daunting I can't even begin to tell you. I have never in my life been as frightened as I on a stage, maybe in any part of my life, as I was the first night I went on when Patti Lapone took a vacation and I was asked to step in to replace her for what became five weeks. Um, <laughs> I thought I was single-handedly going to destroy the show. Not because I didn't know the piece, I mean I know the play, I, I get up in the morning even after I haven't done it for many years and I can do it, you know. Um, but the addition of those instruments, I thought I'm gonna last up somebody else's song. And any singer who's ever had a, a, an accompanist at an audition who's never seen the piece of music and is, it's really beyond them and had their audition kind of really totaled by the uh, piano player, well, I didn't want it to be that person. I did not want to ruin someone else's great moment. But as I found out, of course, I couldn't ruin anybody's moment. Especially in this production, since we're making the music ourselves, you know, I play the violin, the clarinet, the instruments become an extension of my character. And speaking about This Is Love, for instance, um, it'll be interesting, like, as we've gone on to the role, I'll notice, like, I'll be playing a line, Mrs. Lovett will be playing the same line on a Glockenspiel or something, and I'm like, oh, we have our little connection there. It's, it's neat. I mean, the music is just so rich and uh, influences everything. It's fop, finest in the shop. Oh, we have some shepherd's pie peppered with actual shepherd on top. And I've just begun. That's a politician so oily, it's served with a doily, not one. Put it on a bun. Well, you never know if it's going to run. Well, Johnny Depp used to call me all the time and say, uh, David, how can I do this role? How can I, you know, I'm so full of it, I'm so kidding. Um, I, I think it's thrilling that the movie came out. I gotta admit, when I first found out the release was gonna happen during this tour, I was a little intimidated by it. Like, you know, how can you top Johnny Depp, Tim Burton? You know, how can you compete with that? And, uh, but it was really great to see the movie and see that it is stylistically much different. And in a film, you can, the director has a lot more control. He can, he can control what you look at and how much of it you look at. And, and with the stage version, especially ours being so much more abstract, it, the audience has to choose much more of what they want to watch and study and who they want to watch. And so the fact that they're so different has kind of kept the pressure off of it. But the fact that the film came out and was received so beautifully, uh, it's created a lot more interest. And not only that, because our production's more abstract, it kind of helps that people have seen the movie first, because they really grasp the meat of the story, the storyline. They come see us. Of course, the, our production has all the original, you know, has the music and the text. They, they took a lot out of, the, uh, out of the movie for various reasons. And, uh, and so, if they come see ours, they get to see some things, the director's cut, if you will, that, that they, they missed. But uh, it's thrilling. It's created a lot of buzz and a lot of excitement, and that's, that's just helped us. So, it's been great. Before the movie came out, audience reactions were great. And then since the movie came out, audience reactions are great, too. So, it's hard to say. Um, maybe that just means the audience in general is familiar with the show, but I, I don't think so. I think um, a friend who came to see the show last night was telling me that the audience is truly watching with bated breath to see who Sweeney's going to kill next. I mean, it really seemed like the audience was right there with the action. There was no, um, no forethought. I was hoping that people, uh, uh, that we might feed off of some of that wonderful uh, you know, Hollywood hype, helping our Broadway hype come in, coming in. And I think it probably has fed, if they fed off each other. I think it's great for an audience, especially an audience who might have never seen Sweeney Todd, or not old enough to have seen an original production, the original production, which was about as good as it can possibly be, in my opinion. Uh, and I, I just think it's really, really neat uh, and enriching for an audience to to see different takes on it and it's a this is a great piece of American art it's a British story but it's it was drafted it was created by uh, America's uh, preeminent uh, musical theater writer by the sea 
bring along your chopper to the seaside Woo-hoo, by the beautiful sea. It's really exciting to present this piece to different audiences around the country and and see their reactions and know that we're really inspiring people with this story and this uh, interpretation. It's interesting though, I've begun to feel like very at home up there with the entire cast. It's very comfortable to be there with everybody. We can all depend on each other to be together and support each other. So it's a very comfortable feeling that okay, we're on stage all together and here we all are and we're just we're gonna do this. We're gonna make the show happen. We have a lot of fun. Just a tremendous amount of fun. I think the most important thing that's just my take. The most important thing in acting is listening. I mean, because without that, you can't be authentic, you can't be genuine, and, and you can't be honest. And because then you're just playing ideas instead of really responding, and we listen to each other. It's, it's a great time. It's, there's never a moment when one of us is checked out or one of us is off acting. We're, we listen, we communicate, and because of that, we, we've developed a relationship on stage that, that is honest for us. And, and we take that ride every night, and it's a blast. This particular road company is, is, has gelled so well. It's not just, so often road companies get bad raps, you know, if there's somehow they're, the folks aren't up to the task. And I think most of the time, nothing could be further from the truth. Those are very fine professionals who might not have done it in New York. They might not have done it in New York because they had another job on Broadway in another show, you know. So nobody knows uh, what's going on in that regard. Uh, but yeah, this was a really wonderful amalgam amalgamation. We've got just a great cast. It makes it really, really fun. And we laugh a lot um, off stage and sometimes on. We, have, we just really have a good time. A sweet me. A sweet taunt. The female bottle of feet. Street. <laughs>